so let me, I'm going to start with question number four. And it's because it, it has all the parts that I need us to do. All right, so question number four. Um, the tone of the author's elaboration about the special permission bastards could bestow upon their slaves, lines 37 through 39, could best be described as. All right, so we know we're looking at tone, right? So we're going to have to infer. So when you look at tone, you're having to look at the passage and infer what the tone is, right? They never say the tone of this passage is. So you have to kind of get that. So when we look at inferencing, it's a higher level question. It's a harder question, all right? Um, and then we're going to look at lines 37 through 39. So we go to our page. And what we notice, we notice that line 37 is like in the middle of a sentence. So when that happens, I read the whole sentence. Sometimes I read a little above it just to understand it. But this one, I'm just going to read the whole sentence. So that starts on line 35 and does end on line 39. All right. Um, she was a field hand and a whipping is the penalty of not being in the field at sunrise unless a slave has special permission from his or her master to the contrary. A permission which they seldom get and one that gives to him that gives it the proud name of being a kind master. All right. So the very first thing we have to do when we read it is we go back and you're going to paraphrase it. So. With a partner or somebody around you, I need a paraphrase. Now listen to me. There's a difference of summary and paraphrase. Summary is big idea. Paraphrase is if I read that whole paragraph and you paraphrase a line, I can go pretty much to that line and go, okay, this is where they're talking about, right? So I need a, a succinct paraphrase of that sentence. Work with somebody around you, write it down right next to the question, go. Say. Not everybody at once. What was the paraphrase? What'd y'all say? Renee, go for it. Yeah, good. Works for me. She being, I would just reference his mother. That's it. Okay. So, what does a paraphrase do for me? When you paraphrase something, what does it? What does it show me? that you understand. So when we look at multiple choice, a lot of times why you get questions wrong is because you don't understand what you're reading. So we go back and we look at, okay, I'm gonna paraphrase that section so that I can more closely read and understand why did I get this wrong originally because I didn't read close enough when I went back and reread it, okay? All right, then the next thing we're gonna do for this one because we're looking at tone words and we look at the types of like answer choices, this these are all types of like tone words, right? Or tone words. We need to define these. Each one. Now, here's the reason why. When y'all did multiple choice last year, I know y'all did a little bit of like APMCs, right? Applied practice, which are the tougher ones. When y'all did those, did y'all ever feel like there are there were maybe two or three answers that you're like, it could be either one of these, or it could be all three of these, okay? A lot of times we talk about distractors and we'll talk about that later, but the reason why we go in and actually I allow you guys now to use a dictionary, we can't on the exam and when we do the multiple choice test and stuff, you won't be able to. <clears throat> but what we do now when we go back is you're gonna go back and define these words 
because what you'll see is your definition and understanding of it sometimes will be too similar, where the real definition, there's a nuance in the word or in the um, answer choice that makes it different from the other one, right? Or sometimes they're, they're really close and they're really close because they're both wrong, right? So that's why we're gonna go in and define. I'm gonna define these for you um, just to kind of speed up our time a little bit. So being strident means um, irritating or shrill. Sarcastic means mocking or conveying contempt. Now, what happens when you have a word in a definition that you still don't know when you're defining a word? Because that happens, yes? Where you look up a word in the dictionary, or like in the dictionary, and you see the definition, you go, okay, yeah, that didn't help me at all. Then what do you do? Look up that word, right? You just continue until you find something that you understand. And even looking at synonyms, I, I say don't do that because synonyms aren't always the true definition, right? It, it's a variance of a word. So it kind of moves you away from the in, uh, original meaning. Um, even handed means impartial. Rye means dry. Mocking humor. And disinterested is, um, God, where did it go? No attachment. Or not influenced. by a personal advantage. All right. So once we look at definitions, now we want to try to group. And we don't, you can't always group, but I, we want to look at trying to group like answer choices, either by their similarities, their tone, positive, negative, um, like what you think the definitions mean, you want to try to group because what happens is when you group answers, obviously one group is right, right? One group contains the correct answer. One group does not. Does that make sense? All right. So when we're looking at this, what would you say is, um, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, what would you say is, it, what, are there any in there that could be grouped together? Okay. So we're going to group these together. And for me, I'm going to go and do those last. I'm going to look at those last. Because if they're grouped together, then I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time on looking at what is the true difference between the two. With our three remaining, A, C, and E, which ones would you say are, are, are ones that we would say, nope, that's not what he's doing. That's not his tone. OK, so let's look at A. OK, so strident. Why would you say he's not strident? And you cannot say he's not irritated. <laughs> you have to show me, like, where are you getting that from or why are you getting that from what he said? So why would you say that he is not, like, we're not getting this, this tone of irritation in that sentence? What would you say? There doesn't seem to be, like, a sense of urgency to make it stop. Okay, good. So when you're irritated by something, like you, it, it's so irritating that you gotta go, we, we've got to stop this, right? And it's almost as if at this point, does it bother him? Yes, but has he come to accept that this is kind of the circumstances that, that are? Yes. So we're gonna say no. So this is, we're gonna code this and mark this one out. All right, what about C and E? Okay, so being impartial, if, if you're an impartial like a uh, member of a jury, right? It means that you're able to level-headedly see both sides of a situation and understand. 
And so absolutely, he cannot be impartial to the way that this, that this woman's being treated because even though they were separated at a young age for him, it is still his mother. So he cannot emotionally disconnect from her, okay? See, for me, I would kind of also connect C and E. Because I feel like all C and E kind of relate to each other too. So when you, do you see when I say like, if you can group things together, you're grouping them together and going, okay, these are both wrong for this reason, or these could both be right for this reason. And once you figure out these could both be right, then you go, okay, what's the real difference between the two? So why would we say disinterested is not true? I would go back to your same example, right? The same reason. He's not disinterested because obviously it is affecting him in some way because it is his mother. Okay, so now we have, we've narrowed it down to two. What is the difference between being wry and being sarcastic? Go for it. Is, <clears throat> sarcasm is more like attributing malice. Uh, wry isn't necessarily that you hate them or something. Okay, so yes, yeah, so sarcasm can be a little bit more aggressive or more poignant in um, maybe being mean. Okay, sarcasm is more, and I also feel that sarcasm is a little bit more emotional, right? It's a little bit more upfront, all right? What else were you gonna say? Um, well, I was thinking I was, that I would lean towards Rye, because at the end when he says, um, unless a slave has special permission from his or her master, uh, to the contrary, permission which they seldom get, um, what is it? when that gives uh, to him, that gives it the proud name of being a kind master. Yeah. That sounds almost humorous to me. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that wryness, I think, it, as opposed to sarcasm, sarcasm is up front in your face. For me, wry is that person that says something to you and you walk away and then you go, wait, wait, what? And you walk away going, okay, that was mean. Right? Like you walk away, like you, you go, <laughs> and then you step away and then you go, oh wait, that was like, they jabbed me, right? So rise a little bit more kind of underhanded, a little bit more like you've got to really kind of stop and think about it. Sarcasm is in your face, right? And yes, you said rye is because that, that, that contrast. So D is gonna be the answer and it is correct. And the reason it is D is because they talk about that, the idea of that kind master and then I also think where he says to him that gives it, you have to stop and go, who's the him? Oh, wait, it's the master, right? He doesn't name the master there, right? Um, okay, so that's our process, okay? Fun. All right, so let me kind of give you a heads up of what you have to do on the other ones. Um, all right, so for number one, what I need you to do for number one, and it's at the bottom of this page of your passage. For number one, I need you to paraphrase, right? Because we have a reference, uh, reference to a line. And then I need you to code your answers, right? Like with an X of wrong. If you're not sure, you can put a question mark. And then I also need you to group them. And then I need you to tell me the reason for your correct answer. And remember, it has to be more than he's not being wry. You have to show me, like, give me an explanation of why. All right? So that's number one. Um, number two, I need for you to do the same thing. Explain why the answer is correct and then code those answers again. So X, question mark, group any that you see are similar. And even in these ones that have an explanation, Sometimes those can be grouped together as well. Number three, again, you have to paraphrase for me that paragraph. And then if you don't know what brevity means, then you need to define it. Pathos, we know what pathos means. Narrow focus, you can define it. I'm sure you know what it means. Um, but what I need is I need an example of where you find brevity, where you find pathos, where you find a narrow focus within that paragraph. And that ultimately, then pick your right answer, that ultimately will tell me why you got this answer. Does that make sense? Because after you show me where they are. So I need like direct evidence for that. 
four we did, five, paraphrase again. And I think for five, the ones that I um, circled are the ones that I think that you would probably have to define within it to understand the question or to understand the answer choice, okay? Uh, generalization, assertion, irrefutable, hypothesis, refutation, conclusion. So some of those I think you're gonna have to define. And then again, explain your answer and give me evidence of why. Six, this is kind of going towards the, like the example of our tone words. So the attitude towards the master, you're gonna need to define those. These I would say that you could group as well. And what you're gonna see is probably a positive or negative, right? You can group them positive, attitudes, negative attitudes, and then one of those groups is wrong. And then explain for me why your answer is correct. Seven, line 75, need a paraphrase. And then a couple of these you're gonna have to define, right? Deductive reasoning, I need a definition of that. Um, faith in, humanity, in human decency, you might need to define decency. Inductive reasoning, sensibilities you might need to define and then explanation of why your answer is correct and where you see that. So we're always gonna code all of them, group all of them, right? Um, and then number eight, this is the whole passage and when we start doing this, you'll end up uh, summarizing the whole passage so you wouldn't have to do that on this one. Um, and then I just need you to pick your correct answer and explain why it's correct. So notice like with this one, I, sorry, I would um, look at grouping them by, the, by their like marker verb, educate, present, evoke, demonstrate, achieve. Those are all like different forms kind of, right? So if you could group any one of those together, then you can also kind of group and mark out a group. All right, so your role today is going to be to you may work with one partner, so you may work in pairs, okay? Each one of you has to do this on your own page, and then you're gonna go up, I'm gonna put um, scantrons on this front table. You need one scantron per pair, all right? And then those, you put both your names on it. I can't tell bubbles, I already have people that are turning in scantrons with no names. Um, so then I need you to put that up there too. So your, both of your names on one scantron. If you're working alone, you can work alone. I still need that up there. Let's do before you leave today. All right.